Hello, um, and welcome to another Made with the Zeus live stream. Um, so we first started this last week. Um, so hopefully some of you know who I am. Hopefully some of you tuned in last week. Um, my name's Nate. I'm the UK PR manager uh, here at Zeus, and I'm also something of a part-time creative. Um, what we're looking to do with the Made with the Zeus live stream is show what we can do, show off some of the kit that we're using to do that, um, and ultimately get everyone involved. We want to see what you've been creating, and we'd love to share that with the world. And if you are a creative, whether that's anything from movies to music to video games to photography, you name it, if you use Azu software to use it, uh, to do that, we want to see that. So whenever you post the work to show it off to your friends, your colleagues, and the rest of the world, if you tag it with hashtag made with the Zeus, um, we'll check it out once a week and we'll be looking to showcase some of the best work we see on there, linking back to your portfolio and hopefully giving you some exposure to the really good work you do. So we're going to jump back into it. Uh, those that joined us last week, we are doing this as well to frame it around the 30th anniversary of the Zeus. Um, and so I thought, what better thing to model for a 30th anniversary through the annals of time than a museum? Um, and last week we started modeling some of the plinths, but let's get down to it and I'll walk you through what I've been doing since that time last week. So where we stepped off last week, we had our little display cases here and they didn't look quite like this. They had the right shape, but they didn't have the colors, they didn't have the textures. So what we've done is we've applied a nice texture to the base. We've done some fancy maths and you can just see here the way the glass refracts done some fancy maths in the games engine using Fresnel's um, to allow us to, sorry, um, to allow us to get a really nice representation of glass. Um, and we've also added a nice little display plaque. Now, as I'm sure some of you have seen whenever you play video games, you can't always read what's up close and the same is true here. Now, if you guys remember last week, and I'll show you in a second just on here, um, whenever we create something in 3D and we want to color that in, we've got to texture it. And to texture something, we only have a limited amount of space. So if we load this up here, this is what our texture looks like for the plinth. So we'll just drop that to this half the screen, this half here. And you can see that this plaque here is all the way over in the corner, up here. Let's just grab it over here. And so that's why we've packed it. Now, this obviously doesn't look very high textured, high detail, but when you're in a gaming environment, that's not necessarily that important because when we hit play with our third person character here, our lovely shiny mannequin, at a distance, we can make out what it says. And the only way we're gonna be able to get super close to it is to really try and glitch the camera around a little bit. And before you get close enough to read it, it pretty much disappears. So that's where we're at. A couple of other things I've done, um, we'll zoom back in, is I've made a lovely, nice, shiny, polished floor texture here. Um, the way I did this, and I'll show you how we're going to do this with another couple of images a little later on, um, is you make the different layers and the different channels of the material. And also, on the side walls here, we've got our brick wall material. Now, the reference I was using, which I will just drag across here for you, into the main viewport. As you can see, it's obviously a very nice, sort of high fidelity, very refined environment. The colors are looking a little blown out here, unfortunately. Um, but I can assure you that when we're looking at doing the work there, the back wall is made of a sort of uh, a marble material. But I thought we could make it a little bit more London, a little bit more urban. Um, and so I thought I'd go for some, some nice painted brick. Um, and the last thing we've modeled, they're quite hard to see here, but these are some metal girders, which I thought would make a really nice sort of flat roof uh, to work with. And we can show you those just now. Here you go. So here you've got a nice painted girder with some chipped paint. You know, it's had a bit of weathering, a bit of life to it. You know, it's got a story to tell, which is great. And what I've done is you can see this girder is quite small, but these girders are very long. And that's because I've made it up of segments. So this is the same segment repeated over and over and over again, all the way across. Um, and this is good because it allows us to easily and quickly construct environments. 
Um, so I'm thinking the next thing we're going to want to do, if we look at our reference image, is to work on some spotlights. So you can see at the moment in the scene, we've got these, we've got spotlights, but we've got nothing to emit the light from. And obviously, if we're trying to make this look like a real museum, lights other than the sun don't just appear in the sky. So we're going to jump in and we're going to model something like that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look for some reference images. Um, unfortunately, I didn't look at those earlier. That's uh, my bad there. So we'll have a quick Google and see what we can find. Let's type in lighting. Ooh. Spotlights. And here we go. We're getting some really good stuff coming up initially. And I like the look of this one. I feel like it looks professional, yet... It's got some interesting shapes going into it. And we'll just drag this into the main viewport here. And there it is. So we're going to be working on a spotlight like this. And then we're hopefully going to be dropping these into the scene to put alongside our placeholders. So I'm just going to grab something. For any of you guys out there that do any art and use reference images while you're working, there's a really cool application called PureRef, um, which is very much worth your time to get. As you can see, it's a nice little movable window which we can overlay um, over any part of the screen. So we'll just grab our image, drop it in. And this then means that when I am modeling in my modeling program, I've always got something to look at. So let's get to it. I was working with the girder earlier, um, which you can see. But I want to now hide this and this. And we're going to get started on our lamp. So whenever you 3D model in something, the best thing to do is go for the big details, those sort of large shapes and forms, and then work down to the smaller details. So the first thing I'm going to want to do in this situation is focus on the top of the lamp, the lamp, the, the lamp itself, and this sort of Y-shaped arm here that's going to hold the lamp in place. And from there, we can then add things like the rivets, the, the ribbon cable that attaches it, and some of these smaller metal pieces, and then obviously the inside of the light. So let's jump into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my mannequin, because it's always good to have a size reference, he says. Let's just grab the biped himself. And we're just going to move him a little bit closer to the center of the scene. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to get... A, a rough size reference for what we're working with. Now, obviously, we've got a good image and we've got our own heads. And I'm going to just try and think back to where I last saw a lamp and see what we can get the right size. So let's drag out our first cylinder. And this is here where the fun begins. So in terms of sides, again, this isn't going to be like too close to the camera, so we don't need to worry about making it super smooth. So we'll go for 24 sides, it's always a good starting number, and we'll only go for a single height segment, because as you can see here, there's no sort of dinks or divots or anything that we need to account for. So what I'm going to do is going to be a little bit unorthodox, but I'm going to model the light, whereas the reference drops down, I'm going to model it going upwards. That allows me to stack it easier, and it allows me to move around the model in a more logical way. And then once we've finished it, we can just flip it 180. And that should give us what we're after so let's get to it so looking at this here we want to perhaps shrink this ever so slightly and then bring the height up and again let's go in a little bit more and up a little bit more so all the units on the side here just for your reference um, you can set up 3ds max however you like and um, we're british so we use the metric system so these here are in centimeters, millimeters, meters. Um, you can also set up for feet, inches, and yards, if you're that way inclined. Um, but I like to keep things nice and simple and decimal. So we'll get started with this. And as you can see, we've got the next sort of cylinder we're going to try and attach to it. And that's going to be this small piece of plastic here. So looking at it, it appears to be sort of octagonal. Um, so what we'll do is rather than... Actually, no, we'll use a cylinder... Um, and this time, we'll jump to our top view so we can get it nice and centered. We'll drag it out to about that and pull it up. And then we will push it in. Now, I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts here um, because that's something that you learn with time. Um, and it is 
a good skill to learn, I must say. Um, let me just adjust my viewport ever so slightly. It just means that rather than having to move left and right and left and right and left and right, you can you can move quicker and work a little bit quicker. So what we're going to do is to make this octagon, just give our cylinder eight sides. And we can see it's very uniformly shaped, whereas this one looks longer than it is wide. So we'll now make this an editable, uh, editable polygon, which means that we can do what we want with it. And we will grab it, the whole thing, and we just want to rotate it so we've got a flat edge. There we go. Let's just amend this quickly. So we've got a flat edge here. And what this will allow us to do is we can just grab the model, deselect everything in the middle down here. Oh, we've missed a couple of faces. And we can then extend the model in one axis. And we're just going to give it a little stretch. That's not quite what I wanted to do, so we'll try something else. Just drag that out and deselect all of these and drag this side out. And I think if we can just center this on both axes, get that in the center, that's roughly the right shape. We could probably do with making it a little bit smaller. It looks a bit big right now. Um, but a lot of this, as we say, is sort of a certain degree of trial, error, and seeing what looks right. And I think that is a bit of a nicer size. Maybe even we just scale it in this way a little bit and bring it down. And what we want to do is there's a couple of faces here so far that we can see ourselves but aren't going to be visible in the scene. And it's all about keeping things nice and optimal like we talked about last time. So we will delete the bottom here and then delete, oh, don't want to delete that one. And then we will select this and delete the bottom here. And so now we've got this. And what we can do is we can attach this together. And eventually, we're going to build up the one object. So what next? Let's just stick a gray material on here. Uh, like I said last week, sometimes when you get these crazy colors with blues and purples and pinks and yellows, it can be quite hard to see what's going on. So if we just drop a material on here and then change the lines so they're black, what that means is when we deselect everything and unhighlight the model, that's nice and easy to see where your polygons are, where the topology is. Um, so we've got that, and now let's work on this lever arm, shall we? So I think the best thing to do here is once again, oh, we don't want to be capturing things. Uh, shift on this. Let us quit that. The best thing to do here is going to be to just drag a box out in the top viewport and up. And we'll center that, convert it to an edible polygon, and we'll get it back in the scene. Now, what we're going to do is, this is a symmetrical um, addition we're going to add. The, the lever arm, or the, the Y-shaped arm, is exactly the same on the left as it is on the right. So there's absolutely no point in us doing twice the work, working twice as hard. Um, and one thing you will find when it comes to any sort of uh, art or creative or anything you do really is you want to do the least amount of work possible for the most amount of benefit and the great thing we've got about most modeling programs is we can work with symmetry so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these uh, lines going across the middle so the middle polygons and we are going to cut them in half with oh, let's try again with a line there and what that allows us to do now is we can grab half the model get rid of it. Um, and then we can go into our list. And this list here is basically a bunch of quick commands of everything you can do to a 3D model. Um, and you've got things here like smoothing it, um, spherifying it. We'll take the square thing and make it as round as it can. Um, but the one we are looking for, if we type in SY, is symmetry. Uh, and now we can select the angle of axis of symmetry we want. And we want to put it on the Y axis and flip it. So now, if we leave it on for you to see, anything that we do in one tab, uh, one side of the model, uh, will happen to the other side. 
So what I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to put another loop in, another set of polygons. Just about there. So we want this end to look square because we want it to be a uniform shape. And as you can see, in doing so, that's also automatically done on this side. And then what we're going to do, we're going to grab the top one here and we're going to pull it out. And that's done automatically, but I think it's done a pretty good job. Um, we might make it a little bit lower. Um, there we go. And that, I think, is pretty good. We might want to make it a little bit thinner as well. Um, so whilst I'm going, getting through all of this, if there's any questions you've got in the chat, anything about anything, um, whether it's sort of where I learned this, what I use it for, um, or any questions about the program or creativity in general, then, you know, we're, feel free to ask, and I'll see if I can answer. Because like I said, I'm not an expert, I'm an amateur, but it is all about the journey. So the next part is we want to round these edges off. You can see, whereas we've got very hard edges that look like something out of a PlayStation 1 game, we want to have that nice curve. And the way we do that is by applying something called a chamfer or a chamfer. Um, and you can see here, the moment we do that, it pops up and it spits. And the way this works is it will take our one vertical line, it will then split it into two, and it will push them equally across one, across the bottom and up the side. So as you can see here, as we lower the distance, it gets bigger or smaller. And something else we can do as well is we can add a variety of segments. And that is not looking ideal. But you can see very quickly, if we set it to our chamfer type here, and we up the number of segments, and this does happen sometimes, but the way to fix this, we're going to do a little bit of black magic, is we want to grab all of the faces on the sides. It's going to require a little bit of manual work, and we delete them. So now we almost have these two strips of polygons on the top and on the bottom, and we'll do those one at a time. So let's try this again. We'll grab our angle here. We will chamfer it, and there you go. It's looking much better. You can see we've got that curve straight away. So let's make it a little bit bigger and increase the number of segments. And once we've done that, we can hit the plus icon, that allows us to select the other side here. And what we want to do with this one is to match the curve. So we've got one curve and the other behind it is we're just going to have to eyeball it. And so we will line it up with the camera. And where is it? Here it is. And we are going to select here, get rid of this selection and this selection and what we can do now is we can raise he says ah so here's what's stopping us so as you can see we've got the corner uh, corner line here but we also have these two lines and what they're doing is as we're chamfering it's hitting those lines and it's stopping it's not going any further so we can just delete them for now uh, now we change the way we're going to do this we don't need them and we're going to grab this and there we go. Now we're looking much better. So let's just go here. And I reckon if we just ever so slightly decrease it, we've got a nice uniform shape now that goes all the way from the top around to the bottom. How's it going, DVM? How are we getting on? What brings you to watching us today? Um, any Anything you do that's creative at all? sound off in the chat and we will now uh, cap those ends off we want to make sure we cover everything which is going to be nice and easy to do so we can just double click which will grab a whole string and unselect the end and we're going to use something called the bridge tool um, okay so for you guys that haven't seen this uh, what this is is this is a live stream from Azus, obviously um, and what we're trying to do is I am the PR manager at ASUS professionally, but in my free time, um, I like to do 3D art, game development. Um, and so what I thought would be really cool and in line with what we do here is to show off some of the really cool ASUS tech that we work with, um, and by doing that, create something really cool. So just to sort of show you and everyone else what we've been working on so far is in line with ASUS's 30th anniversary. Uh, we turned 30 this year, which is older than me. Um, I thought it'd be really cool to create a museum in 3D, which we can run around and we can play in, essentially. 
um, which is going to showcase Azu's stuff. So this is what the museum looks like in its current state. And what we're working on right now are some spotlights to help illuminate the scene. Because we've got the, the light in the game engine, but we're going to be making the model to surround that light. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Um, we'll jump back in. Um, and like I said, if you've got any, any more questions about what we're doing or why, then feel free to, feel free to ask. Um, and if it's something that you guys do, if you've got any sort of creative talents, whether that is art, music, you name it, um, when you put it up on Twitter or throw it on Instagram, uh, feel free to tag it with hashtag made with Zeus so that we can see the great work you've done, the community can see the great work you've done. Um, and we'll ultimately, we'll share that and we'll help promote your work as well. So it's really good fun. And hopefully this should be a little bit educational as well. So... I think we're doing quite well. We're looking all right. We've done our strip here. Let's just bring this up ever so slightly. And then what we're going to want to do now is we're going to curve the edge here. And again, we're going to do something very similar. Um, but this time, what I want to do so we can control the curve is I'm going to get this ring of edges. So we've selected all the way around it like a donut and we're going to connect them like we did earlier. So we've now got a line in the middle. And what I want to do is this curve here is as best as I can, I want to mimic that. And because it's like a nice gentle slope, what I'm going to do is this line in the middle here, I'm going to pull it up slightly. So you can see we've got a sharp curve. Well, it's not a curve, it's a sharp angle. Uh, and what we're going to do then is bring it up a little bit more and we're then going to chamfer it. Oh boy, that didn't go well. Um, that's better. And we'll allow this to control our curve. But again, we're encountering a similar issue as we did last time. So we'll close this ever so quickly. Grab these polygons, delete them, and these polygons and delete them. Because when you're chamfering something and looking for a smooth curve, sometimes by having it between several faces, um, can confuse the engine itself. So if we try that again, you'll notice that we don't get a flat edge with a bunch of lines. Um, we're going to get a nice smooth curve. So here we go. Perfect. That's just what we are looking for. So let's bring it out a little bit and bring that number down. Perfect. And then what we want to do is we want to just sharpen the edges off on the corners here a little bit. So we can grab both at the same time. Bring this down, not all the way. And I think that is looking like just about what we want to see. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, we want to really nail that curve. And I think that is good. So now all we've got to do is we've got to connect all of these up. And that can be a little bit of hard work. But it's simply a case of grabbing each of these faces. We'll turn the symmetry off just for now. Just now you've got the gist of it and connecting them one by one. So we will open up the bridge tool, and what that does, it takes one from the left and one from the right, connects them together with a polygon, as so, and moving up each side equally, we'll grab one followed by the other, and you can see very quickly how we're gonna patch this bad boy up. And, oh, we have selected something it doesn't like. Okay, so we'll apply this first, and then we can just trying to go the best way to do this. Yeah, we'll grab this one and this one, bridge that, and then we'll have a little triangle at the top here. So let's do that. And then what we can do is we can grab this circle here. So that's just a, a, an empty hole. And we can simply press the cap button. And you can see there it pops an edge on it. And then all we've got to do is do the same for this side, which is nice and simple. So I'll just fly through this, get rid of that. Nope, not connect, that's the wrong one. Bridge, that's what we're after. Um, one, two, three, four, all the way up. Ooh. Sometimes if you select a, a line which isn't a part of the model, it doesn't like it like that. So then we can grab that, grab these, and same again, cap the end. Done. So if we zoom out, reapply our symmetry, and you can see there, once we turn the edges off, 
it's now starting to look, if we flip it upside down, a little bit more like our reference. So that's good. That's where we want to be. Now we're lining them up side by side, though. Obviously, we're noticing that I think the, the base of it is looking a bit wide. So let's just grab this loop here. And we're using the scale tool. We can just shrink it ever so slightly. Uh, I think that's good. And then we want to make this section, let's go back to the normal view, a little bit wider. And the way to do that is we want to grab everything here. So we just grab one arm. And it's just like we're pulling it apart, essentially. So we can whoop, stretch it out that way. Great. So that's another one of the big forms done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the lamp itself. Attach that together. And as you can see, piece by piece, we are getting a, a lamp together, a full, a full model. Um, and this is sort of the, the steps you've got to take to get things going. Um, and it's time consuming. Oh, you know, you can see suddenly just watching me do this and I'm nowhere near as fast as an industry professional, but you can see how potentially video game development can get very expensive when you have all the things you see in a game or a movie or anything that requires 3D art to be done. And the time it takes simply to just make a lamp, you know, let alone some of the, the crazy things you'd see in all these sci-fi movies or action movies or you name it. So we're going to make the lamp now. Uh, grab another cylinder. Pull it up. And I think, is that looking all right or is that a bit wide? We'll roll with it for now. Uh, and we can scale it down as we need to. So what we'll do is we're going to work from back to front. So we'll model this bit. We'll model the cut and then the second half of the, the outside of it. And then we'll model the light bulb separately. And then we'll model this piece separately. So let's get to it. So we'll drag this up to where we want it, which is going to be roughly, if we're looking at it from the side. And let's just view this normally. We're going to have a, a bolt or a, one of the screws, uh, which we're going to pop in there. Um, I'm glad you like it. Good to see we've got some, uh, some, some fans. But like I said, this is all something that I'm not a professional by any means. But... Over time, it's a, it's a skill I've acquired. It's something that I've learned, and you can learn for free on YouTube. Um, it's a really amazing content uh, hub. And obviously, you know, you can watch people like me, and hopefully I can give you a few tips. Um, but yeah, so we'll jump in, and let's pull the bottom of this down first, because we want that to be a little bit longer. And then what I'm going to do here with this cut around the edge is we are going to, you can see if we zoom in, they're actually the same piece of metal. Uh, it's the same cylinder and it's almost as if something stamped and cut in between it. So we'll try and replicate that. And the way we are going to do this, going to be a little bit of finagling involved. It's the first thing we'll do is we will inset this ever so slightly, not that far, because what this is going to be is this sort of metal lip here. And that's great. And then we will extrude it nowhere near that far and bring it all the way down. Again, we only want a really small kind of little gap. And this is just to let the light diffuse out the sides. So I think we're going to need a little bit more than that. We're going to want... Let's go for 0.4 of a centimeter. I think that'll work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull it all out, build the model around it, and then we'll start deleting things, which is always great fun. So we will inset, but this time, rather than going inwards, we'll go outwards. And the way to do that is simply type a minus in. He says, oh, that doesn't work. Let's try something a little different. We will extrude again, which is fine. And then these we will extrude once more with a 0.098. And there we go. The magic is working. And... Let's just grow these faces and drop this down a little bit. So at the moment, um, you can see there's always a lot going on and it's always good to have a usable space. Um, and what I'm working on is one of the ASUS monitors, obviously. Um, this is the PA32. Um, what this is, is it's a 32 inch 4K monitor. 
Um, so you get a really high accuracy um, in terms of the actual screen real estate. Um, and it's got HDR and a wide color gamut. And this is really good because it allows me when I'm working to get really accurate colors, really true to life colors. Because what we're trying to create as a scene is a realistic environment. Um, so what we're going to do quickly is we're just going to grab this loop, he says. Come on. No, it's not having it. So we'll do it the old fashioned way. Grow these, delete those. Um, and we will grab the edge of this and pull it up a little bit further. I think that is good to go for the light source here. And now we're going to make this gap. So what we can do is some of these edges here, we can cut into them um, to make them a little bit thinner. And this is going to give us a much better uh, fin final, um, final image at the end of the day. Um, so what we will do is we will grab this with a ring. We'll grab this side with a ring. And I'm going to put four of these in. So I'm going to try and grab quarters, essentially. Uh, what's the best way to do this going to be? Here we go. Grab this one with a ring. And finally, we'll grab this one with a ring. And so we've got the four edges selected, which is what we need. And we are going to use one of the fancy tools here. And we're going to use something called Flow Connect. Now, what the Flow Connect does is it will connect it, but it will automatically move to maintain the smoothness of the cylinder. So this is great, because otherwise, I put an extra line in here, and then when we did the, the final project, you'd be able to see a weird sort of flat edge wherever we've cut in, and we don't want that. So we'll use Flow Connect on all of these, and you can see now that it's still, on the bottom at least, perfectly smooth, which is great. So let's grab those lines. Oh, well, we've already done the lines. So let's grab all of these polygons minus a couple of the little ones. And this is how we're going to create that gap. And I'm just moving all the way around the model. Oh, don't want to delete that one. Oh. And we are now going to hit whoop, delete. And you can see now we've made that gap. Now looking at it, it looks a little big. But that is a nice easy fix because we can just highlight this ring. Drop this down. And now I think that is going to be a nice sort of visual detail without being too intrusive. And now we've got to the top of the light. So how's it going, Jam? Good to see you. Now what we're going to be doing is we are going to cut in at the top. Um, so you can see at the moment, the, the light itself has got a bit of depth. Um, so we're going to pull it in easy enough, like so. And then we just want to drop this down inside the model. So this is what we're going to hide now. Um, so we're going to go all the way down. We don't want to go past the here, because this is where our light is going to come out. So just down there looks good and you can see we've got a little bit of a oddness going on, on the bottom but we can fix that in post that is a, a later problem and that's great so now what we're going to do is we're just going to cap this off we're just going to make sure it's flat so the light doesn't escape in funny directions so we will just deselect this and deselect this and we will hit bridge boom and there you go so now we're starting to get what looks like a light um, and I am now going to install the light bulb. Um, and again, it's always great to model with reference. So the first thing we are going to do, because we can really dig into it, is I'm just going to find LED light. And we will hopefully, hold it, that is not what I'm after. Uh, there we go. This is it. And what I'm going to do is using my referencing software again. So I'm just going to drag the image across, drop it in. And now we've got a light to model with, which is always good to see. Um, and we'll go from there. So what's the best way to start this? That is always the question. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use a slightly different shape. Because you can see it's uh, the light itself, it's almost as if 
it's been made up of polygons. This is actually going to be very simple to do. You can see these small glass square reflectors. And the good thing is, if you don't smooth the model, you get these nice square shapes. So what we'll do with this one is we'll very quickly smooth this with our smoothing groups. And we can just do that automatically. We can let the computer take over on that one. And there you go, smooth again. But what we're going to do with our light, something a little different. So first things first, we will grab ourselves a sphere. And now we're going to want to fill our gap with the sphere. And let's grow this. Pull this up. And we want to make that a little bit smaller. Ah, a lot smaller. So let's bring that down. Bring it in. And I'm liking that. So what we can do is we can get our edged faces back on. And I'm going to really crank this up. Hopefully, and I trust the software and I trust the hardware as well, this will stay on target. And there we go. So you can see we've got a really nice sort of high amount of sides. So let's just bring the radius down again to about there. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to make this an editable poly, which means that we can play with it, cut into it, take bits off of it. And I'm going to do just that. Uh, we'll go into our side view here. And I'm going to select everything above this line. It's gone. Had its time in the sun. And we'll just go back to our wireframe so we can see through. It's like x-ray mode. Really good because it just allows us to do what we need. And then what I'm going to do is you can see here it's gone black. It was purple. Um, and that's because, unlike everything, um, it's got an inside and an outside. And in 3D, that's really important. Because in 3D, if you're using the wrong side, so if we had a light in this right now, the bottom here wouldn't cup the light. It would actually let it go through because you're pushing through from the back. It's almost like a one-way mirror. So what we need to do is we need to get it and we need to flip it so it's the right way around, uh, which is nice and easy to do because there is literally a command called flip. We'll hit that and you can see now it's gone the right color. So what we will do now with this, how's it going to guys who join us? Good to see you. Um, what we will do is we will get rid of the bottom loop, a couple of loops. Uh, let's grab this one, this one, and this one, and they're gone. And then we can also get rid of this loop. And you know what? While we're at it, let's just delete that entirely so we've got a bit of a hole in the model. Um, so for those of you who just joined us, it's obviously going to seem a little bit weird that Asus is a computer company. have got some random dude live streaming. Um, so my name's Nate. I work for Asus here in the UK, but in my free time, I like to do some 3D art. I like to make games, essentially. Um, and what we're trying to do at Asus is obviously show that anyone, whether you're a guy that works for a computer company or whoever, can be creative, can get into creativity, and can use the hardware that we do to do that. Um, obviously, here at work, I'm using a really nice Asus rig. I've got the GS30 professional uh, slash gaming station. Um, which is great. It's got really high-end components, including an RTX 2080, 32 gig of RAM. It's a really solid system. Um, at home, however, I do still have some ASUS components. I rock an ASUS 1060, um, kicking it old school, and I have the ASUS Maximus 7 motherboard. So again, a little bit older tech, but it definitely does the job. And if any of you guys on the stream, you are creatives, whether that's photography, 3D, hand art, uh, digital art, screenwriting, music, you name it. Um, if you've got ASUS components in your machine or you use an ASUS monitor, um, then we'd love to see what you're doing. Uh, we really would. Um, and yeah, what you can do is you can go online and it's the title of the live stream. It's really simple. Uh, just tag your work with hashtag made with Asus and we will take a look. We can check it out after the live stream. Um, what we do at the end of these is we find out, see who's posted, see what we've got, talk through them, look at what they do. Um, and if it's great, then we'll share it across the ASUS community, across all of our social channels. Um, and it's going to be a really nice chance, I think, to get the, get the community together to see what everyone's doing. Um, so what we want to do is just want to select a loop, going back to what we're doing, um, getting back into the 3D side of things. And we want to connect that loop together. So this is a little bit of a tedious process with an edge here. So let's try with vertexes. And we can highlight all of these edges. Because what I'm trying to do at the moment is we're trying to make, as you can see in the reference, uh, a little LED light bulb. Um, so I need to select all of these to flatten it off at the bottom so we can get our nice LED sensor in. Um, and 
we'll go from here. And there we go. So if I hold shift and click, that converts it to the, the lines that we're trying to edit. And if I just deselect this and deselect that, we can bridge these. There we go. And so that is all done. Now, as you can see, like I was saying, at the moment, we've got uh, a bunch of squares on the reference, which is weird. Usually it's smooth. And we've got the other way around. We've got a smooth sphere. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab all of these. And I am going to use a little trick here. You can automatically smooth something, um, which means it will look at the angle of it and decide how smooth it wants to make it. And we're going to trick it into making everything unsmooth for us. So we're going to take this angle and we're going to bring it down to 0 0.05 degrees. And then we are going to auto smooth it. And this, oh, wrong button, as always is the case, now gives us exactly what we're after. You can see we've got our little individual panels, which is really cool, right? So I think that is going to work for the light. Now, at the moment, it's quite big. It takes up the full aperture. But if we go back to our reference over here, you can see we've got a sort of a little glass lip. So the next thing we want to do, grab the entire thing, scale it down slightly. Oh, that's the wrong way. That is up. And then we can pull the edges out, which is cool. So at the moment, last, this week and last week, you had me and my dulcet tones talking you through 3D art. But something that we're going to do in future on the channel, um, and as we keep live streaming and we get an audience, uh, is going to grab some of the influencers we work with, some of the, the artists that you guys maybe know, some guests. Uh, we'll get them in, we'll have a chat, we'll see how they work, um, and we'll see if they can answer any of your questions, or you know, if not, just show how they work. So stay tuned. Every Tuesday at 4, we stream live for around about two hours, um, and you can catch us there and then. So, down. And we want to leave a little gap because you can see up here we've got a little gap. And something we've got going on here is there's a piece of glass that obviously covers this. And we shall model that separately. So we've now got a nice light, which we can just cut slightly into the model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to model a piece of glass, which is going to have those nice sort of curved edges around it. And this is going to be a good, simple one to do. So we just want to jump in. And it's all about, start with those basic shapes. So we'll throw another cylinder on top. All the way out. And all the way up. And we will drag it up to where we want it. Uh, now we want this to be glass. And when we're working with it, we want it to be visibly glass. Um, so I can at least see through it. So I made a glass material earlier. Oh, don't double click. Drop it on. And you can see now we've got a nice sort of semi-transparent thing going. So let's shrink. Nope, wrong way. Let's shrink the height down. Let's add a height segment. Because what I'm going to do is, we've done it a couple of times before, is I'll make that height segment a little bit bigger. So we've got square edges uh, like this. And then what I will do is I will smooth those edges off to give us that nice sort of rounded glass that we're looking at on the reference image. So let's just pull this up so we can work on it. And the first thing I want to do is... Pull this in a little bit, not that much. Connect this all the way around. So let's grab a ring and connect. And then we're going to grab this ring and we're going to pull it up. You see? And we're going to grab this ring. Oh, grabbing the wrong button there. And we're going to push it outwards. Not that far. Let's try again. This can be a little bit sensitive sometimes. Um, so you've got to treat it nicely. Ooh, there we go. Perfect. Let's try again in that a little bit. Uh, a little bit further. There we go. And now what we want to do with these is we want to apply that chamfer, which makes it nice and smooth. Uh, silky smooth. Not that big. So we'll bring it down. We'll increase the number of the amounts. And there we go. You can see very quickly how that just rounds things off. We go from a hard edge to a nice, soft, polished edge. So we'll do that, and then we'll do the same on the top ring here, which is great. And now, if we turn off our wireframe and we just pull this inside the light, and we want to smooth this as well, we need to make sure we've got our smooth set to the right angle. 
you can see, it's quite hard to see with the glass material on board, but you can see we've got a nice little edge. So we just want to make sure that this is centered. And we probably do with making it a little bit, oh, a little bit smaller, just so it is visible what we're doing. There you go. And now we've got that. So all we need to do is all the things we've just modeled, well, again, we'll start compiling together, pouring them into that light. So let's have a look. Are we looking about right? I feel we could probably make the whole thing a little bit taller. Um, and this is a nice, easy one. So what we'll do is we will attach all of these together using our uh, attach function, which is, here we go, hidden in this menu. And we want to attach this one. Oh, wrong one. We want to attach this one and this one and give it the material again. There we go. And what we're going to do next is just grab this and set that to its own smoothing group. There we go. So we get a nice hard edge. Um, and we are going to scale the entire thing. So let's just grab the lot and push it that way a little bit. And I think that is just about right. What do we think? Yeah, we'll go with that. So now we've done the light itself, what we can do is we can position this and where we've got the pivot, we can angle it, which is good. And we are good to go. Don't want to grab that way. Uh, we can angle it, which is always handy. And you can see here at the moment, we've obviously got the sort of the gap where the lever bars connect, but that is not a problem. What we're going to do is rather than attaching everything together at once, um, when we come to like put the textures on this and make it look like a light, uh, we do want to keep some of it separate. Um, and what that allows us to do is it allows us to isolate certain elements when we work with it. So for now, we just name things rather than cylinder one, cylinder two, three, four, five. Um, we will name this uh, lamp underscore base. And we'll name this bit lamp underscore lamp. Now we'll call it lamp underscore light. Um, and the good thing about this is you can see here, we've got the plinth sections, we've got the lamp sections. It just allows us to keep an eye on what's going on the scene and be ordered because right now it's easy. We haven't got much going on, but when you're working on an environment that's got 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 different assets in it, suddenly that list gets pretty unmanageable. So we've got the light here, which is great. And we've got, I think, the big forms of it now. This looks very much like what we want to see. Um, what we can do next now is we can work on some of the smaller forms. So we're going to work next on our little screw here, um, which is going to be a nice nice little touch to it. Just adds a nice bit to the silhouette, makes it quite visually interesting. So once again, we'll start on this side because this is where we can draw it out uh, and then we can actually edit it. So we'll start there and drag it out, drag it up. And which way are we going? We're going this way. So that is flat as a pancake. We want to make that higher. So let's increase our height, push it to the other side. And that looks about right. It's maybe a little bit higher. Um, just perfect. Single height segment. And then let's bring it in here. And what we're going to do is you can see if we look at the... Um, if we look at the, the sort of the screw itself, is it's not flat on top. It's got a slight curve to it, a slight raise. Um, and this is something, again, that's really simple for us to do. So we'll grab this whole polygon, uh, and we will use something called the bevel tool. Now, this is an interesting one, because so far you've seen me inset things, which is where we pull them in, and you've seen me extrude things, which is where we then push them out. So we can shrink it and move it. Um, what the bevel tool does is sort of a combination of the two of those. And I'll show you exactly what I mean, uh, not when it's doing that. So it defaults these funny values sometimes. Um, so we can pull it in a little bit. And we can also raise it up a little bit. And you can see how we get that nice curvature. Um, so we add that in there. And we can oh, be really gentle with it. And then we'll bring it down a little bit. Um, and then once we let go of that, at the moment, it doesn't look very smooth, but that is 
but a click away. And we can smooth it. And there you go. If we look at it, we try and get that light lined up. You can see we're just getting that nice, subtle reflection across that really gentle curve. So we will carry on modeling with it, um, which is really cool. So what we've got at the moment is these sort of these ridges. Um, these are really small. You're really not going to see those from way out here, which is where these lights are going to be sat. They're going to be quite far off in the scene. So for the sake of expedience, um, we wouldn't usually do it. But for the sake of education, um, I'll just quickly show you how we could add these in. So what we want to do is we want to just delete the top here. We want to, or before we delete the top, we want to just grab this ring of uh, lines here, this ring. So we'll just delete that now, go back to these. And then if we hit ring, fingers crossed, it should select all of them down the model. Perfect. You can see we've selected all of these in a strip. Now, if we connect them together, we just want one in each. That's good. And you can see how it's automatically selected those for us. That makes our job much quicker. So we'll just go into this view. We'll deselect everything except the vertical edges. Vertical? Horizontal? The straight edges. Um, and you can see here we've got these. And then all we need to do is if we just scale these in ever so slightly. Nope. Come on, play the game. You can see how we can get that sort of effect. Now, we don't have enough sides on the polygon, uh, on the cylinder, for this to really, like, work as it should. You can see there it's not, like, not very subtle. But what we do is we usually just put double the number in and then make the ridges themselves. So for now, uh, we'll just undo that. And we'll keep that as is. So now we want to connect this little bolt um, all the way through into the lamp so it looks like it's holding things together. We don't want stuff floating because uh, unless... This is some sort of high fantasy. That is not how things work in the real world. So we'll bring that in with an inset. Sometimes you've got to really finesse the camera. Ooh, I think that will do. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Perfect. And then we'll extrude. And this is going to go flying across the screen, as you can see there. But all we want to do is just, let's make that one. Yeah, that looks about right. Perfect. And so what we're going to do with this one is going back to our symmetry modifier here is we will grab this element. We will detach it quickly, just pulls it off of the main model and allows us to work on it separately. We will then attach this to here and we can then put our symmetry modifier on. And like I said earlier, well, the symmetry modifier does exactly what it says on the tin, along a defined axis, so that's X, Y, or Z. Um, in this case, it's the Y axis we want. It mirrors detail. So you can see here, uh, before that, bolt on one side. After that, bolt on both sides, uh, which makes our lives nice and straightforward. So in doing so, it seems that we may have undone or undoed a back a little bit far. So let's just grab this again. And we want to make sure we confirm that extrusion that was meant to be in there. So there we go. We've got that sorted now. We will just smooth this one off because we want to make sure things don't have that sort of blocky angular feel, which is never good. Uh, auto smooth. Let's have a look at that. That's looking nice and smooth. And then we can take this and we can delete half of it or we can just attach what we want to it. And let's put a symmetry modifier on there. Flip it in the y-axis, bang, nice and easy. So we've done that and this is looking pretty good. That's one detail down. Now we've got this detail here which we're gonna work on with the sort of the back of the lamp. So let's go back to our lamp model. And what I wanna do is whilst we're working on it, working on it at an angle is very difficult to do. Um, certain tools and certain things we wanna do will only work in that sort of X, Y, and Z axis. 
So let's just, before we do anything crazy, uh, rotate this back to where we want it to be. Perfect. And that is straight. And then we can get working on it again. So we've got this mesh section at the back here. Um, and this is where we can finally fix the bottom of the mesh. Delete that. We've got this mesh section at the back. And I think the way we're going to tackle this is probably um, when we make the sort of the game ready version of it, um, we will do a little bit of technical wizardry, which I'll go through in a bit. So we won't have it on this version of the model, but we'll add that sort of crisscross lattice after the fact. And hopefully we should have enough time to get into that today. Um, so let's pull this in again, bring that down because we're trying to create that nice curve. Um, hey there, how's it going? Guys, you've just joined us. And I think that's looking all right. We could probably stand to chamfer this. And this will just soften that curve again for us. Perfect. And we then want to bring this in a little bit more down ever so slightly more and then we want to add this sort of small plastic lump on the back that's gonna be nice and easy so simply we extrude outwards we extrude downwards probably do making that a little bit smaller but we'll tackle that in a second and we then connect the bottom up perfect so the way we're going to make this a little bit smaller is we'll grab the bottom we will grow our selection and then we can just simply shrink it. We can scale it in one axis. And there we go. I think that's looking a little better. And we could probably, while we're at it, just make it a little bit shorter. And that's good. So that now is, I think, all we need to do on that lamp, other than smoothing this off. Uh, all of this. So let us automatically smooth it sometimes you want to go in there manually and do it so here you can see how it's now trying to make that smooth and we want that to be a solid edge um, so what we can do is we can select nope we can select this ring of polygons and we can get it to automatically smooth this so what that'll do is it will smooth the polygons we've selected and it will ignore everything around it so it will almost pull it out separately so let's do that and you can see there we've got a nice hard edge back which is what we were after so now we've done that and we want to put our cable in, we can put this back to the position it came from. So let's twist it. Hopefully it won't be squeaky in game. And we now want to add our cable. Now we can do this in a number of ways. I could sit here and I can grab another cylinder like you've seen me do a million times and I can manually pull it out. The problem with that is you don't get a very realistic curve. You don't get sort of the natural flow and the ebb and the shape of how a cable might might flow um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a spline now a spline is a fancy 3d modeling word for a line essentially um, but what you can do with splines is you can draw what you want the line so in this case we're going to use it for a cable but you could use that to replicate uh, detail on an object if you're trying to um, recreate a, a complex curve in some Victorian architecture or even if you're trying to map out the ASUS logo if you're trying to spell it and render it in 3D you could use a lot of spline to trace the edge of it so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our side view we're going to turn on our colors so we can see what's happening and with this we just want to give it a black line color which makes it a little bit easier to see in the viewport um, and we're going to draw our cable in so the way we do that we grab our line tool and we want all of our curves, uh, points on the line here to be smooth. Now you've got three types of point you can have. I'll just demonstrate this quickly. Now you can have a corner, which is where you click, you pull it out, you place it and it bends. Once you let go, you've got a bend. And what you can do is you can also grab these and hold shift to control what goes on. And you can see how you can get some really nice um, organic shapes out of this. So what we'll do is we'll just, oh crumbs. We will just delete both of these, not that. And we'll try again. 
So the easiest way to do this for us is we kind of create a nice natural shape is if we set both of these to smooth, what it allows me to do is just regularly drop those points in along a curve and it will naturally match them. So let's give it a go. So we'll start in the left hand viewport, uh, the front viewport, sorry, and we'll cut the curve in we want one way. And then what we can do is we can move around the model and we can sort of move it into a more natural position where the cable's bent and curved over time. So here you go, look, we can see here, we very quickly can throw a curved cable in and we'll just bring it into roughly where I want it inside the mesh here. And if we jump out, you can see we've got our fancy curve and I don't like that. So let's select our line and we can select some of the points. And if we just delete this point, we get a much nicer curve here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. I just want to space this curve out a bit more so it looks a bit more like the reference with a nice heavy sort of thick cable. And let's bring that down there. Maybe bring this one up. Bring this one up. Yeah, perfect. And then I think to get a little bit of just variation, we can bend the cable ever so slightly so it's just looking like it's not coming out at like a perfectly machined straight angle. And the really cool thing here, like I said, when it came to rendering out a cylinder and manually doing it, is that's really time consuming. But what we can do with a spline, once we've drawn it, is we can turn it into a cylinder. We just simply hit enable in renderer, enable in viewport, and bam, we've got a big girthy cable. We don't want it that big for now. So what we can do is we can simply drop the thickness down to about 0.5. Looks about right to me. And uh, let's just bring the number of sides up to 16. And here you can now see we've got our cable. We've got a little bit of an issue on the end here, but all we need to do is just drag it slightly inside our mesh. And you can see we're now very quickly getting to the point where it's starting to look like a lamp, which is great. Um, so let us just grab our material here, make this one gray again and black. And what I want to do is I'd like to attach that cable to the lamp. So we'll just attach it on there. So now you can see we've got two sort of segments to this. We've got our, our lamp, the actual light itself. And then we've got the base. Um, and this is going to come in handy keeping them separate when it comes to texturing a little bit later on. So we'll turn both of these on for now. And now what we want to model is we're on sort of the final stretch when it comes to the modeling side of things. Is we want to get this nice little sort of metallic detail here. Um, and you can see it's quite a complicated shape. Um, but that's not a problem because we can handle it. We can deal with that. So let's turn our wireframe back on just so we can see everything. Um, and again, if we were making this for a video game, uh, a lot of the question would be, does it need to be this complicated? This wire here, we could definitely cut a lot of these rings out, remove them, and drop the polygon count. Because when we go over to the game, which I'll show you now, uh, we jump in, you can see the lamps are going to be absolutely tiny. The lamps are going to be, you know, maybe a couple of these squares in terms of size. And when we're playing, when they're going to be out of the player's way, they're going to be up here you can see we don't necessarily need the highest fidelity of detail. Um, so yeah, let's jump back into it, crossing our modeling program. So I think this looks pretty good for now, um, once we've done the ring that I promised we'd do, uh, obviously. So our last cylinder of the afternoon, I think, for now. Uh, let's try and zoom in, find the bottom of our cable, and draw a cylinder out, raise it up. And now let's just eyeball it into position. So let's pull it back a little bit, cross a little bit, and let's just bring back our reference so we can see what we're working with. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is we're on a little bit of a lip here, which is gonna come in into a little bit of sort of a donut shape and then loop off into the inside, um, which is super simple stuff. So let's make an edible poly out of this. Get our edit tool up which doesn't seem to want to work. There we go. And let's cut a loop in here and here. And that will allow us to extrude these. But rather than going outwards, making a big old 
like disc, uh, we can go a little bit inwards. And that's what is going to give us our cut here, which is cool. So let's just grab the top quickly. Ooh. Bring it down ever so slightly. And we're going to use our bevel tool again. Uh, that's what I spoke about earlier. This is a nice, easy fix. Just in terms of getting these sort of slightly rounded shapes we need quickly. We can do this on the edge, which is great. We can then inset again, which is really good. And then we can do another bevel, he says. Nope, we want to inset that. I did do it right the first time. And we want to bevel. And this time, rather than going up by 0 0.019, we simply want to go... Oh, wrong way. Oh, dear. All right, let's try that again, shall we? We simply want to go down by this value. And there is how we've got our nice little cut in here, as you can see. Um, and then the last thing we want to do to sort of sell that hollowness is potentially we could swell this bit up a little bit. Uh, just scale that upwards. There we go. And then we can extrude this down into the mesh. Just get rid of it entirely. Um, and now you can see, hopefully I didn't go too far. Oh, I did go too far. So that's fine. We can just delete that. And far too keen. That's my issue. Bring that up. And this is just our last final detail. So now all we want to do is quickly auto smooth this. And that has gone for how we want it, which is good. And we could probably actually stand to throw this as a ring. Throw that. And if we bring this inwards, it will just showcase a little better. Now we can still come up a lot further here. Keep going, because we don't want wasted space. The more sort of space we've got that you can't see on the model, the less space you can texture with, which is never what you want to see. And great. So now let's add this, attach this to here. And I think our model is pretty much done. So what we want to do now is we want to get this into our game engine. Um, but something we will, that will make our lives easier in the game engine, should I say, is if we have a number of different materials. So you know earlier I had the glass material which we dropped onto the lens, not the whole thing obviously. Um, I wanna make sure that lens has a different material in the engine. And the way to do this is to create a material with a bunch of different layers. Um, Cause the way the game engine we're using, Unreal Engine works, is if you have one model, you can have a variety of textures on it. You can have layers one to, I think it's about 32. Um, not that you'd ever want 32 different textures on one object, but it just means that if you're trying to reuse things, like I've already got a glass material that I'm using in the engine. Um, if I want to use it again here, having two materials means I can do that. I can attach my glass material to the lens and I can have my bespoke flare, um, material for the lamp. So let's give that a go. Um, so we want to grab our multi-object material here. Um, this is a really easy way to work as well in terms of visuals. So let's give this a crazy color. Let's just make it bright pink. And that's perfect. And we want to grab this onto our mesh. And you can see not much has changed because everything at the moment is the same material. But if we grab this lens, set the material identification to two, bam, that's gone bright purple. And when we take that into the game engine, that will remain bright purple. So now I think we're in a good position. So we'll grab this and make sure that we are at the center of the level. You always want to make sure everything you do is centered. And we'll grab this and do the same. We'll just make sure it is just perfectly centered. And if we select both of these, what we can then do is we can export them. Export selected. And we'll simply call this lamp underscore low. And now it's time to do a little bit of magic in the game engine. But one thing I have noticed is the lamp is the wrong way up. We want to flip it because it's going to be a ceiling lamp. So let's try that again, shall we? Let's attach first this. And then we will grab our, both of these. 
uh, rotate them 180 degrees and then we just want to make sure we drop this all to floor level which is this black line in the center of the screen here and I think that's about right so now we want to select these we want to grab their pivot and we want to center them both to zero so we'll bring that one down and that's perfect so now we've done that we can try again with the exporting um, export selected and we can just overwrite simply what we've already done so let's try lamp low done and that's perfect so now we should be able to go into our scene uh, we'll hide our reference once more get that out of the way we don't need that and we can add into our little folder here of meshes so far we've got the big walls we've got the short walls we've got our plinths and we've got some metal girders that i worked on and now we are going to add our lamp so let's bring that in this is all exactly what we want ignore those and it looks like it's brought them in separately which isn't what we want so let's delete these and let's try again with our importing and lamp low let's have a look see where we went wrong ah here we go so when i exported them obviously i exported them as sort of two separate things you have the top of the lamp and the bottom of the lamp which was perfect for when we were working in the other program but then we want to bring them in we want to bring them in together it just makes it easier so if we hit combine meshes when we import fingers crossed there we go we have our lamp which is great and here's what it looks like in the engine you can see it's a little bit small a little bit smaller than i'd like but that is not an issue so let's just change how far we move do, do, do. perfect and then let's maybe scale it up a little bit shall we this is really easy to do you just grab it bat bat and that i think is a much more substantial looking you know what go even bigger we have a movie grade spotlight there we go um, and what we can do is looking at our reference that we were working with um, these spotlights sort of line the girders um, and then we can use these and we can tie them in with our spotlights in the engine so let's bring this one across oh no wrong way across here and then we'll just push it back roughly in line with our spotlight which is great now with the spotlight if we bring this up in line with our lamp there we go so it's now inside the lamp which is good we want the light source to come from the right place we can now um put the textures on oh it's not quite central but this is just where we have to finesse things push that over that's fine that's just about where we want it now going back to what i was saying about the two materials you can now see if we open this up and zoom in on our lamp we have got the purple and we've got the white and what we can do with our purple material is we can search for glass and this is what we want uh, glass material and now you can see we've got a really nice looking sort of refraction and reflection on the glass which is perfect and we'll save that we've got to do the rest of the texturing a little bit later on in a different program and now you can see we've got our lamp here um, if we just hide everything all the lines it looks great and now all we need to do is because we moved where our spotlight is pointing we just need to readjust that spotlight to be focusing again where we want it to focus so let's just twist the spotlight and then we'll match the twist with the lamp because we want everything to look as realistic as we can in the scene so we've got a little lamp there pointing and what we can do then is we can continue to position those lamps throughout the scene um i mean that's something i'm gonna do a little bit later on when i'm noodling with this in my free time um i'm not gonna sit here and make you watch me put lamps on lamps on lamps so let's jump back into the engine now as we can see with a lot of these things here if you look on the sort of the side display bar um you have something underscore low and something underscore high and this is a really good example of that so let's just get our mannequin out of the way uh, we're done with you for now buddy bye-bye um 
And let's just show you the girders. So we'll show you the low poly girder. And we'll show you the high polygon girder. Now, these might look at a distance pretty similar. Um, and that's because really they are. But what we've done with one of them and not the other is we've smoothed them off. So if I show you the edged faces, here is our low polygon girder. This is the one we're going to take into the level. And you can see there's not a great deal of stuff going on there. All the, the, the polygons are rather big, rather simple. And that's what we want uh, when it comes to working with a game engine. Um, and on the left-hand side, we've got the high polygon model, which has a lot more going on. There's a lot more polygons, and they don't capture big details. They're not huge things you'll notice in the scene. But you can see, if we turn the faces off here, you've got a really hard edge on this left one. Uh, sorry, this right-hand one. And on the left-hand one, the high polygon one, you've got a nice soft edge. And those are what we want. Those soft edges make things much easier to read in a scene and make things feel much more natural because even a, a solid steel girder isn't going to have razor sharp edges attached to it. You know, it's going to have a certain amount of smoothness where it's been beaten and battered and dented over time. Um, so we're going to try and do something similar with our lamp. Um, and I feel the easiest thing to do here is going to be to start with our base, buttery biscuit base. Um, here we go. So we'll just select this and we will copy this. So first we'll call this lamp underscore base underscore low. Easy peasy. And then we'll copy it and we'll call this one lamp underscore base underscore high. And the way we do our turbo, our smooth edges, the way we get those, something I talked about a little bit last week, is the turbo smooth, which sounds pretty rock and roll. And as you can see, it does an absolute number on the model. You get weird lumps and bumps and everything gets super round. But there's a way we can fix this. And we are going to do that just now. So we'll jump back into our editable poly. We will go to our edge facing mode. And the cool thing about this is we can see what it looks like squished. And now we can also see what it looks like hard edged. Um, and we're going to try and create something a little bit in between. So the first thing we're going to do is deal with the base of our lamp. Um, and we are going to grab a loop and we're going to throw it in. So before I do this, just a quick explanation on how this works, is the way turbo smoothing works is it takes each of these faces, so the orange squares there you can see, and it divides them into four, each, each face. Um, and then it tries to average out the position. So if you've got one here and one here, it splits those and then averages them out to be a smooth edge. Um, hence why the turbo smooth. But we can control that. You remember earlier with the, uh, with the chamfer and we found that if we had two edges close together it controlled how much we could do it by? This is going to be exactly the same principle. So if we drop this loop in you should see bam, very quickly pulls itself closer. Because if we look at this now you can see how the polygons and we'll make it a little bit more obvious by just upping the number of oh no, no, don't do that bring it down a little bit. Upping the number of iterations, you can see we've got longer polygons on the, to on the bot top here and shorter polygons on the bottom. And that's where we sort of squelch things down. So let's try this. Keep going with it. So let's turn our wired faces on. Grab this. And the cool thing here is just a really good example is you can tighten it or loosen it. And this shows you how this one loop can really help sync the model up. And what we're going to do is we'll just bring that back a little bit. Our top face here, as you can see, it's coming up as a really funny color at the moment. So we'll just turn this off. But we can put another loop in the top, and we can do that by using the extrude, not the extrude modifier, the inset modifier. And now if we add that, show this. You can see how we've got a nice smooth edge on there now. Um, let's just unselect this entirely, and you can see what I mean. So that there, the light curves across it. It's a nice sort of slow transition versus the hard one. And we're essentially going to copy those details across a little bit later on. So let's just keep working down the model um, and doing the exact same thing. So we want to grab our loops, chuck those in, and we can keep going like this. Now, something else we can do, and this is a little bit of a hack and a shortcut, which is what I'm going to show you, is throughout the time, obviously, we talked about smoothing groups um, and how we have 
auto smoothed everything, um, which is good. Auto smooth makes our life nice and easy, and it also allows us to control the sort of the the slope of the edges. Um, and the way we're going to do that is between these two is we're going to use the computer to put those sort of close edges in for us. And we're going to use a chamfer modifier. And what this will do is, as you can see, it will firstly screw up the mesh. But we'll turn that down to zero. And if we return this up, it will take every single line on this model. And it will split them into two. And if we set this to do this on unsmoothed edges, um, so those edges that are hard rather than soft, you can see it starts throwing loops in where we want them. Let's just turn it down a little bit so we don't break the model. And then if we turbo smooth, you can see it's very quickly worked out, um, which is great. We've got a couple of errors here and there, which you can see, but we can fix those after the fact. This is where, unfortunately, this system isn't perfect. Um, doesn't work 100% of the time every time. Um, but we can go from there. We can work it out. So let's see what's going on here. That's doing all right. But we've got a slight issue here. Um, let's do the old-fashioned way for now, shall we? So with this, we can then grab here. We can inset this a little bit to keep putting those loops in. And we can then put in, where are we, come on, even the computer's looking to call it a day. We'll grab the ring here, grab this, grab all the rings, and then we will connect. And this is another great way to just very easily throw loops in. So we'll have two segments, we'll bring them nice and close together, because this will support our edges. And now, if we go into our Turbo Smooth, that, as you can see, is the perfect solid shape we want it to be, which is great. Um, so for those of you that are tuned out or tuned in, just to kind of give you a heads up of what it is we're doing here today. Uh, this is the Made With A Deuce uh, live stream. Uh, my name's Nate, I work here at Azus in the UK, um, and in my free time, I like to make computer games. Um, I love to do the 3D art for them and keep them uh, visually looking great. Um, and so I thought it'd be a great idea for me to come on here, jump on, show you a little bit of the work I do, and showcase some of the, the really cool ASUS tech we're working with. Um, so at the moment, I'm very lucky, because being in the ASUS studio, you get some really sweet gear. Um, I'm working on the ASUS GS30 Game Station. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great crossover between a gaming machine and also a work machine for professional use. Got an RTX 2080 in there, really powers it through. An Intel i7, 9th gen. Um, solid motherboard, 32 gig of RAM, so it's a really good bit of kit. Um, and I'm also working on several of the ASUS ProArt monitors, which give me 4K, they give me high dynamic range, they give me a really nice color accuracy. Um, this is in the studio. However, at home, um, I work with a much more modest rig. In it, uh, only a couple of the bits are ASUS. I've got on a GTX 1060, old school, and another old school motherboard, the Maximus 7. Um, and what we're looking to sort of show with you guys is to get you interested, to get you on board with it. And if you've got any creative work you do, whether that's art, music, creative writing, and you've got ASUS components or an ASUS machine, if you tag that work when you share it online with hashtag made with Azus, um, then we'll check out the content on a live stream like this. And we'll also showcase it across all of our networks, whether that's Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. So get tagging. Um, anyway, let's get back to it, shall we? Um, so again, we can grab this ring here, and that goes all the way around the model, and we can put a loop in. Uh, so let us connect, and we'll bring this down a little bit. Nope, bring that up, bring this down a little bit. And you can see we're just bringing the edges in there, which is what we're after, um, which is perfect. And then on these faces, we'll grab all of these, including these. So something I need to do just quickly, I feel like there's a couple of errors in the model, but we can fix them uh, once we just let this do its thing. And unfortunately, the program's crashed. Uh, this is always the way things work. Um, it's never good to see, but... Uh, when you're doing some quite complicated maneuvers as we were just then, 
sometimes it can take its toll on the machine um, and the program. So let's just load that up quickly. While we're doing that, let's have a little run around, shall we? So this is the level we're currently working in. Last week, we made these cool little display cases. And in them, hopefully, we're going to start displaying some ASUS equipment in time. Maybe a few old school motherboards, some cool gaming stuff, maybe even a notebook or a phone or two. Uh, we made the textures on the walls and the floor. And what we've been working on this day is this little lamp up here. Um, so it looks like our program's loaded. Good thing is, as is always the case, we've got a nice auto backup generated. Um, just in case, it's always good to have backups. And we shouldn't have lost a great deal of work. So let's jump in three minutes before things happened. And as you can see, we're great. We've lost a little bit of work we've done on the top here, but it is definitely better than it could be. So all I want to do quickly is before we go any further, I just want to make sure that all of our vertices are connected. And I did not want to do that. Let's just turn this amount down a little bit. Perfect. And this should make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to smoothing off the model. So let's get back to it. We were there. We've done that. OK, cool. So let's just quickly replicate what we were doing. Um, I will connect these, get the two of those, bring that nice and close together. And we're back to square one, which is great. And let's grab this ring connect these together as well and there we go I apologize if on the mic you can hear my stomach rumbling but it is dangerously close to dinner time I must say and I'm very much looking forward to grabbing a bite to eat once we have completed what we're doing um, and then let's just grab these teeny tiny boys at the bottom here as well and we want to inset these um, so that should just create another loop there um, and let's have a look and see how that's got us on. So first thing first, you see we've got nice hard edges. Well, not so nice hard edges, should I say. And now, there we go. Got some nice smooth edges. Obviously, it hasn't quite worked as well on the back, but that's because we've still yet to fix that bit. And obviously, these bolts now looking like little acorns, uh, we need to fix as well. So there's that done there. We'll just grab the... Oh, we we'll just grab the back of this up to here, all of these, and here again. And we are good to go. Um, let's have a look, shall we? So let's inset this on this side, and that's perfect. So we'll just continue on our way through. Um, now, there's a couple of bits here. Again, going back to what I was saying about game development, where you don't necessarily want things in the scene that aren't going to be seen in the scene. Um, so the end caps here on these little bolts, if we look at where the lamp goes, they're taken up. So we can delete those. We can get rid of them. We don't need them. It's just one less headache to think about, um, which is always nice. So let's hide that. Let's grab these and delete them. And let's carry on going with our smoothing process. So you see instantly that's just saved us some cells and time. It's opened it up. It's spread it out a little bit. Um, so let's jump on and start throwing some loops in. So let's grab all of these. And same on this side, all of these. And yep, we'll connect those together with our connect tool, which is good. And what this is going to do again, if we just see where we're at, is that allows us to control the sort of the tightness of that loop. So we'll come up and in, which is great. Done there. Um, let's turn that off quickly. We can grab this loop. Let's turn this one off quickly. Grab the ring there. Uh, let's connect these together. And we'll bring this down a little bit. It's perfect. And you can see instantly it's looking better. So we'll just finish off this bolt. Uh, I think we'll check out, see what some people have done on ASUS on the, uh, with the hashtag, and then we'll wrap up for the evening. Um, so let's just quickly grab this with a ring and a connect. Pull that out. And finally, let's just connect these. And we want to get rid of this loop here. And that should 
give us a nice smooth bowl, which is perfect. So yeah, so let's quickly save this. We always want to make sure we save our work. Um, and we can get back to having a look at some of the really cool stuff that the community's been making with made with Zeus. So let's have a quick look. Let me just boot Twitter up over here, see how we get on. Um, and again, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, all of them feel free to tag your work with hashtag made with Zeus. Um, and we can see what you've been working on. So just a quick one before we get into looking at some of the artists. Um, one of the guys we shared their work from um, is a guy here. He was featured in this week's uh, post, um, and that is uh, this guy here, Rui. Um, really great guy. He's done some really awesome stuff with photography, both with bands. Uh, he's taken some really cool stuff at car shows, and he's edited it all on his Strix laptop, which is a gaming laptop, which is really cool stuff. Um, we've got a couple of others to check out. Um, I might shamelessly self-promote, uh, but I feel like that would be the wrong thing to do. Um, one of the guys that we work with on a regular basis, uh, he's a streamer, um, a guy called This Is Antoine. Uh, that's not a great picture quality, unfortunately. It looks like the, uh, the stream deck's not playing ball. Um, but again, you guys can search Made With Zeus on Twitter, uh, and you can also check it out. Um, and we've got a variety of others uh, to check out. There's some 3D art on there. There's some really great photography stuff. So I'd thoroughly recommend going online, having a look for yourself. And once again, adding some of your own work and tagging it along. Um, so that's been the Made With Zeus live stream. It's been really great uh, to have some people along watching and I hope you've enjoyed it and you've maybe learned something new or been inspired to create something yourself. Um, definitely stay tuned to the channel. Uh, you'll have more of my dulcet tones, um, but we're also looking to get some really cool guest streamers on. Um, not next week, but the week after we'll be chatting. So this is Antoine, um, real cool guy. He does some really great YouTube stuff around fashion and tech wear. And we'll chat to him about he, how he uses Asus and his workflow to edit photos and cut the videos together. But in the meantime, it's been great to have you. I hope you'll have a fantastic week and I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.